What's up, fellow Lords of Gaming, and welcome to a episode of Elden Ring. Yeah, so I'm giving you guys some Elden Ring content. Like I said, I'm going to be diversifying this channel and trying to give you guys more of the games that I actually play uh, on a daily basis. Um, so let's jump in because I've been having a shit ton of fun for Elden Ring. Um, a lot of conversation and debate going around about accessibility and stuff like that that I believe is conflated into I'm just not good enough to play the game. No problem with accessibility. Uh, but despite all of this, um, the game has been doing remarkably well on by all you know by by all standards by any metric of measurement you would say that the game is doing well. Um, let's take a look at some of the changes that recently came because we are in version 1.03. We've had our first major update for the game on all platforms: PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Steam. Um, now. Unfortunately, it doesn't address any of the issues related to widescreen optimization, which I really, really want it to. I really, really want some widescreen optimization um, and the 60 frames per second. Um, so, ex you know, we're still capped now. There's been some players out there who have modded it to make it widescreen available and to exceed the 60 FPS cap. But neither nestle here so let's jump in and talk about some of these additional elements changed so there's a couple of things that are really really cool that they added because apparently we were missing out on some npcs inside the game um i didn't really think that we would be missing out on npcs I it was kind of weird but they basically added an icon to the map so that way you could actually view where npcs are so you can see for instance like there's sorcerer thops is over there inside there you can come over here and you can see sorcerer rogier's here uh you can see nephili luke's ne nephili lou i like that name that's cool nephili lou um it's sitting over here inside stormvale castle where i'm currently at and uh, this is cool now it only pops up if you have actually met the npcs already so you still need to actually see them in a sense inside the game but it's pretty cool that they've added that function overall to the game i think a lot of uh uh, from software's previous decisions to do things a certain way inside of dark souls it just doesn't pan out well for the open world scale that this game is uh what i mean by that specifically is um things like being able to track the quest lines of people that you talk to uh that is something that we've typically seen from uh from from source uh dark souls titles and even their blood bloodborne titles where the game was pretty linear set you know you you still were operating in a linear environment but in an open world environment where you have such grand places that you could go it's kind of weird to think of it in this regard because you're like ah i don't know something about it just feels a little off because even i as a dark souls fan i like you can go check out one of my other channels um i'll probably pop that in a link at some point where i have dark souls one demon souls content and stuff like that there um from years ago when i was doing youtube um uh, yeah, I think some of those design changes have, you know, they need to be changed. Now, if you notice, they also added NPC Jar Bayern, I guess that's his name, and they added new quest phases for Diallo, uh, Nephili, who I just talked about, uh, Kenneth Height. Uh, Kenneth is someone that's sitting all the way inside the Mist Woods. So um, it's kind of cool that they've added him inside here and they've given update quest lines for my dude because, yeah, it, the quest line for him felt pretty, like, I don't know, something about it felt dead after the fact that i completed it um but they added quest lines for him they added uh some summon npcs in multiple situations like i have not really began my journey inside elden ring if i gotta be perfectly honest with you open world games are a little bit weird bad for me because i will typically play the game and uh i will run around and collect almost every waypoint every access point before i actually start playing the game especially in the open world game it's just gonna allow me to do it anyways like even if you were to look at my level inside the game <laughs> i want to point this out to you guys i'm still only level 35 now i'm level 35 but if you look inside my inventory you're going to notice there's quite a few things inside here to include you know some ashes that i probably shouldn't have at level 35 uh to include some weapons as well that you'd be like mm, bro 
might as well just start playing a goddamn game. Like, uh, for instance, if you look at my weapons list, uh, I have things like Reduvia, which isn't necessarily hard to get. I've got, you know, uh, the Sword of Night and Flame. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've basically run around the game and collected some stuff inside here to basically play through the game the way I want it to, I guess. Um, I don't know. It's like weird. I, it's just the way I play uh, what you call games. I do want to do a live stream playthrough of the game with you guys, but I'm trying to do this one where I just do it for my enjoyment more than I do it for, you know, content creation. So because I do intend to do multiple run throughs of this game with multiple different weapons and trying to access different routes and boss battles and so forth. Now, I was about to f fight Godric, so Nephili is actually available as a summons here. I'll use her so that way you can see how powerful she is. So that was just not me just talking to you through this video. But they added some summonable NPCs and situations, and they increased the number of patterns of objects players can imitate when using the Mimic's Veil. I haven't obtained Mimic's Veil yet, so I wasn't really using it. It was very overpowered uh, uh, Ashes of War, and I didn't use it. They added night background music for some open field areas, which I think is cool because even my, my girl, she came into the room uh, one day when I was playing. I think I was down in uh, perhaps the most beautiful area in the game is... Uh, what the hell is the name of that area? It's right over here. Siofra River Well. Uh, go over there if you just want to see some absolute beautiful beautiful stuff it's so weird how they've created this beautiful landscapes inside this game with these just atrocious looking monsters so yeah so those were in there they had a number of bug fixes inside the game uh obviously you know bug fixes are gonna come but you know nothing necessarily that needed to be talked about except for I think the one thing that needed to be talked about in there is there was uh, a situation where players could not obtain more than two talisman pouches. And so like if <clears throat> if you go inside your inventory, your equipment, your talisman pouches are these right here. I'm using the Assassin Crimson Dagger and the uh, Crimson Amber Medallion, which is what I started out with. Uh, I obviously can change those up. I've received quite a few medallions at this point. Oh, I don't even remember when I got that. Um, but so essentially what you have inside there is that ability now to purchase the talisman pouches from the twin maiden husk shop lineup now the twin maiden husk are uh located inside of the round table hold so if you just go to the round table her i can't speak if you go to the round table hold you'll see these two old hag looking ladies they almost like conjoined twins and they are um they they have a shop lineup there for you nothing else major inside the bug fixes that i could think of um yeah i can't really think of anything that necessarily now there was some balance changes quite a few balance changes that i think a lot of players will be pissed off about so let me jump into these while i get inside here and go get killed by um go get go get killed by these guys um so number one they increase the drop rate of smithing stones for enemies this is really good uh mostly because i was running around for a while without having leveled up my weapon uh which i'm using the uchi katana with a uh, keen on it and i've got the ashes of war for bloodhound step i got a video coming out showing you how i cheese dick the hell out of that to get it um, uh, they, so that's good because basically a lot, we need more smithing stones and things like that to be able to play with certain weapons. That's just the truth of the matter. Um, is this the one I want to summon or is it angle that I want to summon? Now nah, we're going to summon you guys. Um, and then they basically increase shields effectiveness. Now the question is across how many places have they increased the shields effectiveness don't expect me to beat this guy right now while i'm doing this video and recording for you guys because i'm doing it at the same time that i'm playing huh. Ooh, my man. Dodger is painting my ass with his little son but they also um so they also made some changes where they increase the damage for some of the items no 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 oops i'm gonna change that let these let Nephilim do, do her job inside there. He did away with my summon one summon pretty quickly. It, it kind of hurt me. Um, I still haven't gotten his timing down. It, I, I faced him one time so far, and he kind of staggers me a lot inside here. I don't really know what my man is planning to do. I can't keep lead stacks on one for some odd reason. I'm gonna die right now. Oh, God. So one of the things 
I think people are going to be really pissed off about is that they did change up. Uh, this, this, what did they change up? They changed up the way Mimic Tear works, so it's no longer as powerful as it used to be. Um, that's going to be the biggest thing. And then they actually um, they actually changed as well with that the uh, strength of arcane weapons. Arcane weapons have been some, like drastically boosted. I mean, the arcane stat wasn't pairing very well with the game in the first place, but they, so now it's working, and now arcane weapons are some seriously overpowered. Well, I won't say overpowered, they're powered. Some, FromSoft does a pretty good job of that. They also decrease the Ash of War Horfrost Stomp, which a lot of players, if you watch any of the speedruns, they were kind of using that to kind of assist their speedrun. So they increase the, uh, the damage and increase the casting. They decrease the damage and increase the casting times. Bloody Slash has also been nerfed. A lot of people are doing some power builds with that one, which was pretty cool to see because I actually like the idea of it. And so they changed that. Now, some of the weapons that were changed, especially weapons like the Sword of Night and Flame, they removed the damage. If you're not familiar, Sword of Night and Flame was clearly like a call out to, um, it was clearly a call, ah oh, shit, I forgot about this. It was clearly a call out to, um, to the Song of Fire and Ice, right? Like, what I mean by that is, is that it was clearly a thing for George R. R. Martin's, uh, you know, call out for his thing, so, yeah, there you go, I'm dead. Uh, it was clearly a call out for, you know, that, but, um, and it basically dealt, uh, like this projectile blast damage, and it also did flame damage, which was kind of cool anyways, right? But, so you basically have that nerfed in the game as well. Some of the FP consumptions on certain masteries were also changed, which is pretty good. And then they increased the damage on some other things. Like one of the good things was gravity well, because it wasn't really that good in the first place. But overall, we got basically some nerfs. Now, the really one thing that I was weird about that I didn't see was this, um, the PVP, ex I, I don't know if it's an exploit, I guess it's working exactly the way it's supposed to since it didn't get changed any. Um, but we'll have to see. And then, like I said, the Mimic tier Ash for the Ash of War was basically the one, that spirit, where you basically got to summon yourself into battle. I think that's the one that most players would probably say, you know, they're probably sad to see go. It's not like it's necessarily been depowered so much. It's just that it doesn't have the performance that it used to do because it used to just mimic everything that you freaking did pretty much. And now you don't have that anymore. But overall, that's where we at with our first balance chat balance patch i'm loving the game and i hope that you're enjoying it as well if you are playing because more than likely you're here because you are playing it so until next time guys peace i'm gonna go kill godric